and welcome to Analyzing Finance with Nick. We're going to be continuing the Debunking the Doomer series. And this one I'm going to talk about climate change and the increased probability of natural disasters. And first, let's, the point I'm really trying to make is that not necessarily whether or not man-made climate change is happening. I'll give that debate to the consensus. The question really is, one, is this climate change really going to be the end of the world? And if it is going to be the end of the world, have we seen signs that this is coming? Because the, the Doomer claim is basically that since the 1990s, um, when industrial manufacturing and emerging markets countries started joining in and building factories and emitting carbon that you would have temperatures consistently rise. You would have ice caps consistently decline. You would have um, sea levels rise to the point where environments are permanently damaged and a lot of coastal cities will be completely flooded. And you would have increased probability of natural disasters and climate patterns that will make living much more difficult and the environment will be un break uh, like unfixable and completely broken to the point that it won't even be possible to grow food at the same level that we're at right now and you'll have mass extinction and poverty and a bunch of other bad things happen because of climate change that is the claim that I am trying to debunk here really is that first of all whether or not climate change is happening and I'm just going to assume it is really to give strength to the doomer argument here is are the consequences of it bad enough that the world is going to collapse without radical political change and if you even take it a step further are the consequences of climate change severe enough that radical political change would be worse and i mean that like such as mass levels of forced carbon emission restrictions and zero economic growth models and society that will have to basically just reduce the amount of output and energy that is consumed to levels that say were pre-world war ii levels or even lower depending on how dire the claims are from the alarmists on this topic is cutting our standard of living and energy consumption that much would that be worse for humanity and worse for society than just letting climate change run rampant because that is the real question here is that is it really is like how like the solution there is a solution if your solution is just to have a massive cut in energy consumption and a massive decline in living standards needed to succeed in that is that really necessary uh i will try to just analyze this and break us down in the rest of this video uh first let's just look at some of the the facts here first when it comes to the sea level claim i mean i i remember watching convenient truth which was Al Gore's documentary on climate change when I was in high school. And he would show these videos of like the San Francisco Bay and the Netherlands and South Florida, or actually all of Florida, completely sinking underwater by the 2020s. Like he was, it wasn't really directly stated, but it was kind of implied, yeah, by like, like this was main 2006, by 2016, there was actually a chance that Florida would be underwater. Uh, this is 2023. Florida is not uh, underwater on a permanent basis. I mean, there's sometimes hurricanes that cause floods, but yeah, it's Miami is not Atlantis. And San Francisco Bay is still there. And you really haven't seen the mass level of floodings that would be implied if it were true. So let's look at the numbers. And I'm going to use an objective, what I think is source of what the sea level changes, and that is NASA. NASA tracks through satellite data the global mean sea level. 
and the rate of change really since 1995 and it's been pretty stable I will show the chart in this video has been about 3.4 millimeters per year and if you do that between now and you have um, in 2100 you will get 10 inches of sea level which I think would be the worst case scenario here 10 inches is not enough to flood the world the, the percentage of the world's land that has an elevation of sub 10 inches and is located in a um, region of the world that is economically too underdeveloped to build the necessary infrastructure to pump out the water is very small and it's just intellectually dishonest to say that the world is going to flood due to high sea levels and that is the worst case scenario but if we dig a little bit deeper and try to figure out what the actual costs of a lot of this climate change is and what is going on it presents a much more optimistic picture first let's look at the the ice cover you seem saying that the arctic ice cover is at record lows but the arctic ice cover had its trough in 2017 according to the reynolds optimally interpolated sst arctic sea ice cover data set and it has risen to about the mean from the post 1980 mean um, over the last five years um, the temperatures in antarctica in the winter uh, have made record lows since at least the post-world war ii lows and it's again it, they their temperatures peaked for antarctica which was minus 56 degrees in the south pole in 2011 and now it's down to minus 61 and it's really if you look at between 1957 and 2021 it's pretty flat there's variations of course but there's really no definitive trend uh, the other optimistic thing is you've seen the restoration of the great barrier reef really since 2017 the coral cover in the great barrier reef has gone up from 14 percent to 36 percent which nobody really expected and is a pleasant surprise for the world of environment the other thing is look at the frequency of tropical storms since and hurricanes since 1970 uh, the frequency of those is really has gone up a little bit between say 2020 and 2022 for tropical storms but it's gone down for hurricanes and the overall distribution is pretty flat there isn't that big of a change over the last 50 years in terms of the frequency of tropical storms but then people say oh what about Katrina but what about this recent hurricane in Florida you've seen a lot more damage and dollars and higher amounts of deaths than you did in previous ones well I think that's also just due to the fact we have a bigger economy and more development in metropolitan areas like back when you had hurricanes in Florida in 1900 there were no people living in Florida like Miami had less than 20,000 people in 1900 and so as a result yeah you had a hurricane blow through it it didn't do that much damage because there wasn't that much stuff or property to damage now there's a lot more property to damage miami is one of the biggest metropolitan areas in america it's millions of people so if a hur the same hurricane that blew through there in 1900 would blow through there today of course the damage would be like a bigger storm and it'd be because the cost would be a lot higher just because simply there's more people in the way of the storm and i think that is like we see like record levels of damage for floods or record amount of displacement from storms and things like that it's true just because there's just more higher population and you have better tools to track these things and you have more property that is in the way of these things 
I, I, people don't really think of it that way. Okay. And then you look at temperatures and the running temperature 13 month average has increased since 1979, whereas the temperature deviation from the mean was declining up until the late 90s and then started to increase. Say like for right now, it's about 0.2 degrees centimeters a year in terms of the, um, the increase of depart variation. So like in 2022, the world was 0.17 degrees Celsius hotter than it was than the median for the last 50 years. So if that, and that's lower, like in 2019 and in 2016, that was as high as 0.4 degrees Celsius higher than the median. And that number is leveling off. Well, does that mean that the pace of climate change is slowing? It either means that one, a lot of the environmental reforms that people have already done and lifestyle choice changes that people have done voluntarily and the grid switching from more dirty fuels such as crude oil and coal in favor of natural gas may be doing the job. And we've already are making good steps to fix this. Or this was never a big problem to worry about. And depending on what side of the aisle you are on this issue, it can mean a multiple things. But the bottom line really here, as I'm trying to say, is that the climate picture is not as bad. But let's just say I'm wrong here and that I am just being a Pollyanna or a denier and I am underestimating the impact of climate change and that a lot of weather patterns are going to change. And the question is, is this all bad? Because for every place that is adversely affected by climate change, say like Bangladesh, which is probably the, one of the highest probabilities of any country to experience climate related flooding, there are places that would benefit from climate change. But if you look at the map of the world, a lot of the Northern hemisphere where it has plenty of land that would otherwise be suitable for farming or urban development, but simply just too far north and too cold in the winter to be habited. Canada, most of Canada, like 90% of Canada's population lives within 100 miles of the U.S. border. And you have Russia, you have the northern edges of Scandinavia, you got Tierra del Fuego and, and the southern Pampas in South America, and Antarctica are all uninhabitable because they're too cold. But if you had a lot of climate change, a lot of this land could open up for people and animals and other life to prosper. So, and the fact that a lot of this land is concentrated closer to the poles means that the net arable and habitable land may actually be positive from a warming climate rather than negative. Uh, the other thing is like rain patterns. You always hear about climate change changing rain patterns and causing desertification that, oh, you'll have less rain in places like California or in Spain or in other parts of the world that have had have kind of mild to dry climates. But just because there's climate change doesn't mean that it will stop raining uh, and that evaporation doesn't happen. and but if evap and all the water in the world will just be sucked up and never come down. That's not really how the evaporation works. Uh, the temperature in the higher levels of the atmosphere is minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. And as a result, it get the water gets too heavy to stay up there, the vapor, and it solidifies. And that's why it drops as rain. That's how rain works. So, if you have more evaporation in a place that's getting hotter, that water will go somewhere else. Uh, the example, we've seen this in the world now, really since temperatures have risen, you've seen the level of rain become far more abundant in the upper Midwest in places such as Minnesota, Illinois, and Iowa. And 
Indiana, and the result is he had very favorable corn crops. What's to say that a lot of these, these rain patterns shifting could move rain to places, places that are deserts right now that don't get enough rain and make them habitable? Let's just say maybe the rain patterns move due to a warmer climate. You get more rain going to Australian outback or to the Gobi Desert or to the American Southwest or to the Sahara Desert, and those become green. I mean, it's it's the same. It's it's just as likely as mass desertification of all the rain moving away from places that get marginal rain or a lot of rain, simply less. It can work both ways. It's not inherently always the bad outcome that comes from change. Uh, and I never really hear this side of the argument at all for climate change. And as somebody who's more knowledgeable about this, because I'm not a climate scientist. I'm, a macroeconomist and investor. Why is climate change automatically always a bad thing? Like, if the winters are less harsh for people who live in northern climates, it could be a good thing for them. If rain moves to places that are previously desert, that could make more open land available. It could just be a trade off. And why don't we hear, like, and the trade off could be net positive. I'm not saying it will be a net positive. But it's just as likely to be a net positive as the doomers claim it to be a net negative. And overall, that's my thoughts on climate change and natural disaster. Uh, there is evidence that you see sea levels rising and temperatures rising, but it's not automatically a bad thing. And the probability of natural disasters is unchanged. It's not, and a lot of other catastrophic fears that the climate change alarmists are saying in terms of like the impact of temperatures and food production and natural disasters just it simply has not happened the floods that they've claimed that would happen by now in a permanent fashion from rising sea levels have not happened and a lot of the doomers i mentioned in like why i stopped becoming a doomer is i've lived long enough to see that a lot of the claims that were made previously by doomers never come to fruition. And I think that's starting to happen a lot of these climate claims. The other thing really too is, again, there's the social cost, which I may talk about in a future video because that's not really a doom argument, but the bigger risk I think from climate change is governments passing policies in the name of preserving the environment that do more harm than good to keep people's living standards down or lower living standards and at the cost of preserving an environment that doesn't need to be preserved or that or they take steps that are too drastic when more moderate things to clean up the environment are what are needed to be solved uh, yeah like there's real issues say in the 70s about polluted water and air and the on the, at least in the developed world, the air and water is far cleaner than it was, say, in 1975 or 1980. So, yeah, there are things that can be done. And they're just the, the end of the world scenario that we either have to go to the Stone Age or we're going to have a climatic apocalypse is a false dichotomy in this debate. Um, and, yeah. So I just think though people who have said in my comments and tell me, oh, like the climate is so doomed, like why do I bother to try if the world's gonna end due to climate change already? Or why do I have a family if the world doesn't have enough, is gonna, the climate is gonna be so doomed that people won't be able to live long enough or it'd be irresponsible for the environment to your humanity to have a future. Hopefully this video can be helpful to explain why that is not the case. Thank you for watching.